Okay, so we are on page 397, area between the curves. So let's say that I had two functions, f of x, and I had g of x, and I wanted to know between a and b, I wanted to know the area between the curves. Okay. So this is just like what we did before. Nothing new here, right? We're going to go take a slice like this. And this is going to be our delta x, right? What is my height here for each little column? What is my height? This is f of, if this was c, right? This is f of x. This is g of x. So it's basically f of x minus g of x, correct? Right? So the area, entire area can be represented as a f of x minus g of x dx, right? Nothing to it, really. Because what you've done before was we did only one, we had only one, right? And we went like this. And really this is the function is a to b f of x minus function zero, function zero, meaning x the x active, correct? But it's the same thing here, right? And just as when we did on the first, on this one, if I had a function that looked like this, I went from a to b, this part of the function is gonna be what? Negative, right? Right, we said it was negative, right? And this was gonna be positive. And this would cancel out some of this. And we did that, right? Unless you wanted the actual area between the x-axis and the curve, then you would flop it over, right? We talked about that. This is the same thing. So if I have a function that's f of x, and I have g of x goes like this, if this is a, and this is b, I'm going to have f of x minus g of x is going to be positive here, but then it's going to be negative in here, then it's going to be positive here, correct? Depending on which one is dominant, right? Okay, so you can always, you can all, almost already see that these points where the plus and the minus is changes are going to be points of interest for us because we're going to have to rewrite some of these things some of these times, depending on what's going on. Okay? Final right. page 397, there's a green box. You need that. Make sure you understand it. It's really nothing more than what we just said. Okay, flip the page. Example number one, find the area of the region between y is equal to secant squared x and y is equal to sine x from zero to pi over four. So if you graph it, you can see that y is equal to sine and y is equal to secant squared x is dominant over that. In other words, it's always on top, right? So, I'll just go ahead and go like this. Zero to pi over four, and I have no problem. Because it never changes, right? Which one is positive, which one is negative. Okay, so it's just straightforward, just we're doing that. So if I do the integration, what do I get here? Tan x, what do I get here? plus cosine, right? Because I kind of have a negative here, right? Evaluate from zero to pi over four. Okay, can we do this? Tangent pi over four. Come on, man, tangent 45 degrees. That would be the sine or the cosine, yes. not the tangent though. It would be like over each other. Yeah, so it would be one. Yes. Yes. 
this guy, cosine pi over four was one over root two, just as who told us. Okay. Then I have to subtract a zero. What is tangent zero? Zero. Cosine zero. So what do I end up with? Okay, so that's that. What? Yeah. Can you just see it here? The calculator? Oh. Uh, 0.707? Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> 0.707. Okay, so that was example number one. Example number two. Page 398. Find the area of the region enclosed by the parabola of that and the line that. Example number two. Y is equal to two minus x squared and y is equal to negative x. Is that correct? Two minus x squared. Okay, so two minus x squared. Two minus x squared. So I'm going to have two here. We're going to have root two here, negative root two, negative x. So it's going to look like that. And I want to know this guy here. Okay. Well, it's going to be this guy, right? Which is y is equal to two minus x squared minus that guy, correct? All right. So it's going to be. 2 minus x squared minus minus x, so it's actually plus x, d of x, except I do not know these points. Right? Again, this is, going to be a point, this is going to be a point of interest for us, right? So I need to find the x values for this guy and this guy. Well, what, ha what happens at these points? They're the same. 2 minus x squared is equal to minus x. Move them over, I get x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to 0. Factor negative 2, negative 2 plus 1, negative equal to zero, which means that this happens when x is equal to negative one and two, right? which makes sense because this is 1.414, this is root two. So it's on this side, right? This is negative 1.44, negative 1.414. So the negative one would be on the inside. So I'm going to go from negative one to two. And that's where I got, I got these from here, right? So now I can take the integration. 2x minus one third x cubed. Cubed to negative one. Minus one, minus two, plus one third. Good. Let's do that out, right? Four plus two is six, plus two is eight. So I have eight, and then I have all the rest, all the junk. The junk is. That, that and that adds to be negative nine over three, which is negative three. So I get five minus one half. Answer must be 4.5. Okay. 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 So it's not necessarily that hard. Okay, the key here is what to is to draw it 
draw both graphs, figure out what's need, needed. I need these two points. But in order to get these two points, I had to set these two to equal to each other, solve that, and that gives me these boundaries, right? I knew it was going to be, this guy's always dominant during this where we're looking for, right? So I knew it's gonna be this guy minus the minus X. Okay, but just finding this was a little harder. And once you do that, it's just a syllabus mechanical stuff, too, right? Not a whole lot going on there. Okay, example number three, using a calculator. This is Luke's favorite one. <laughs> example number three says, We are finding the area of the region enclosed by graphs of y is equal to two cosine x and y is equal to x squared minus one. So y is equal to two cosine x and y is equal to x squared minus one. Example number three. Two cosine x is going to look like two pi over two, negative pi over two, right? It's gonna continue. I'm not drawing this part obviously here now. Over here, I have x squared minus one. So I have minus one, so do half of that two. So somewhere around here, minus one, it's a parabola. It's going to go like this. So both of these graphs, as you can recognize, are both even functions. They are both reflective across the y, they are symmetric across the y axis, which means that whatever you find here, this x value is going to be the same, only a negative over here. So we know that. The question is, can we calculate these two or these two are the same? So I set these two together and I come to a conundrum. No way I can algebraically fix or find, right? Because you have cosine on one side, and you have x squared minus one on the other side. So, so you just graph it, you trace this, then if you trace it out, what do you get? Plus or minus, so it's 1.2654. Two, four, five, six, from negative to positive, two, four, five, six. In other words, this was 1.2456, so this is negative. And then you're going to do the top, which is two cosine X minus the bottom, DX. Okay. The actual integration is not too, not too bad. Right, because there's not a whole lot that's going on here. There's stuff you can do in your head. We're good with that. Okay. But you have to use your calculator to find this. And the whole point is that, well, if you use a calculator anyway, just go ahead and mint it. Right? Go ahead and mint it all the way through. If you do that, you get 4.9949. I trust the uh, book would be correct on that one. Let's do one more. I'm going to call it quits for the first part. Step number four find the area in the region R in the first quadrant that is bounded above by y is equal to root x and below by the x-axis and the line y is equal to negative two. Y is equal to root x, y is equal to x minus two, and the x-axis. Y is equal to root x. X minus two would be Negative two 
some point here. I don't know what it is. And the x axis. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm looking for that area. So if you're looking from the x part up to here, we are root x. In this region, my column looks like what? My column looks like delta x, but its top is going to be this guy minus zero. So I'm going to go zero to two. Up to two, it is root x minus zero, d of x. But then from two to, I don't know where, b, two to b, I'm going to have to calculate this guy. But on the bottom, now I have this guy, which is this guy over here. So I'm going to subtract that out. Everybody see that? So you have to change, you have to understand that the function is different from here to here versus here to here. Again, the point of interest is where are these two together? And so I'm going to get square root of x is equal to this guy, which was x minus 2. I could be able to solve that. How did you solve it? Yes. I want to get rid of this guy, right? This guy's the problem here, correct? So how do you get rid of it? Let's square it, right? You square both sides, right? X is equal to X squared minus 4X plus 4. Move the X over, I'm going to end up with X squared minus 5X plus 4 is equal to 0. X minus 4. X minus one is equal to zero. X is equal to four or one. So obviously this is over the, on the two sides. So this must be four. Anybody tell me where this guy is? Right <laughs> so when you squared that function, you went from just this side to the other side. So this is the other side right here at one where it's leaving. Okay. Yeah. Make sense? Make sense. Now you know where that one came from. For us, the one doesn't work. All we're looking for is the four. So we'll put this four right in there. We need to solve it. Okay. I don't. I mean, this is going to be zero, two, x one half, dx plus two, four. It's not two, it's x. Again, x to the one half, negative x plus two dx. So it's going to be what? Three over, not three over two, two over three, right? 2 over 3, x to the 3 over 2, 0 to 2, plus 3 over 2, x 3 over 2, minus 1 half x squared plus 2x from 2 to 4, whatever I can get to. And we're going to end up with 10 over 3. 10 over 3. Okay. okay. So we'll stop right here for the first step. We'll start working on our homework.